Word of the day. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Psalms 100 verse 2. Today we are making puff puff, so no long talking, let's get straight into this. In my mixing bowl, I am pouring in some all-purpose flour, as well as I'm going to add in some salt. But no worries, everything that I'm using as well as the recipe will be down below in the description box for you. Then we are just going to go ahead and set that aside and work on our wet mixture. We're going to start this off with two and a half cups of warm water and we are going to add in some granulated sugar to this. Next we are going to add in the star of the show which is our active dry yeast. You can use the rapid rise yeast but I just find that active dry just works better for me. So we are going to go ahead and get this open. If you are enjoying the video so far don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to join the flavor family. We'd love to have you as well as hit that bell notification so that you are notified every time I drop a video. Alright, so now that we have our yeast open, I'm just going to go ahead and pour this in. And next we are just going to give everything a nice stir, just mixing everything thoroughly together, making sure to break up any lumps or clumps. After stirring, we are going to go ahead and just set this aside for about 10 to 15 minutes and I'll show you why. About 15 minutes in, this is what we are looking like. As you can see, the yeast has gone ahead and reacted with our sugar. As you see, like the top has gotten all foamy and bubbly. This is how you know you are ready to get cooking. We are gonna go ahead and bring back our flour and salt mixture. And as you can see, I kind of forgot to mix the two together, but no biggie no biggie we're just gonna go ahead and pour in half of our yeast and sugar mixture and we are gonna mix that until it's just about combined then i'm gonna pour in the remainder of the water and yeast and sugar mixture and we are gonna go ahead now and thoroughly mix this making sure to you know get out all the clumps and the lumps in there mix this until you get a smooth batter one thing I will say is that some people will tell you to make your puff puff batter thicker than this and I will show you um, my consistency in the end. However, according to me, I have found that when you make the batter a bit thinner, you get soft and more airy puff puff. I have found that making the puff puff batter too thick gives you like really dense and like gummy puff puff and I don't like that. That's just my philosophy. We want our puff puff to be light and soft and airy. Even after we fried it and we want to reheat it the day after, we want soft puff puff, okay? So that is why I make my batter this light, but of course, if you want to make it thicker, you can just to make it easier for frying for you. But I've gotten so used to frying puff puff that this is just like the back of my hand to me. So this is my consistency. As you see, it's thin, but it's not like super runny if that makes sense but all I would say is just for me I wouldn't go any thicker than pancake batter all right so the long talking is over we are gonna go ahead now and just go ahead and seal this with some cling film or plastic wrap whatever you call it you can literally just like throw a kitchen towel over this and leave it at that but this is just how I do it I'm a little extra I like to seal the bowl with cling film just to prevent any extra air getting in there i don't know I, that's just how i do it i don't really have a reason but after i seal it up like this i am gonna place this in a warm oven you want this to rise in a warm environment do not cook this i didn't say cook this in the oven i said put it in a warm space and we are gonna let this rise for at least one hour so that the yeast can do its thing
all right so boom one hour later here we are i'm gonna go ahead and take off my saran wrap now and as you can see my batter has doubled in size of course the longer you leave it the more the batter will double but i'm just gonna go ahead and take this off and we are gonna go ahead and get to the fun part so boom here we are we have some vegetable oil in our pot i have this on medium high heat and this is what i'm gonna fry in i'm just gonna go ahead and start dropping in my dough but i did want to show you how i kind of get like how i get it to be round i kind of just grab some and then whip it in my hands and cut it with my thumb like that i'm not sure if there's any science to this but this is just what works for me if you are having trouble like doing it with your hands you can always use like an ice cream scoop and that will get you fairly round um puff puff but i'm just gonna go ahead now and keep dropping in my dough into my oil here i do have this on medium high heat i'm not sure if i mentioned that but you don't want to start off on super high heat because you don't want the outside to cook before the inside gets a chance to cook as well as you don't want super low heat because if you fry it on super low heat the dough is just gonna absorb a lot of oil and you don't want super greasy puff puff nobody likes that but we are gonna go ahead and just keep frying and we're gonna fry it until it's nice and golden brown like that when the puff puff is almost done they will kind of like flip over as you can see most of them will and you could just like flip the other ones over that don't automatically do it by themselves and we're just gonna go ahead and fry these until they are nice and golden brown if you're not sure if they're done or not of course you could just pick one up and taste it and open it and see if the inside is done if not you can always just drop it back in the oil and let it continue to fry So once my puff puff is good to go, as you can see, the ones that I dropped in first have pretty much um, cooked through by this point. As you can see, they are very nice and golden brown. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and take these out. And we are just going to put these over on the side in a, what do you call it, a dish rack? sorry not a dish rack a strainer that has been lined with paper towels so that it can absorb all the excess oil and also give time for our delicious puff puff to cool down before you dig in and there are so many ways to make puff puff guys this is really just the very bare minimum the very basic um kind of puff puff but it's still really good like the simple things are always the best but these are totally customizable you can add Add as much sugar as much sweetener as you want you can throw some nutmeg in there i know some people like to put pepper in there like there's so much you can do with these and these pair perfectly you can eat them by themselves or you can even eat them like as a side dish with a meal like with beans or something like it is incredible but here you are puff puff that went to harvard and graduated with his master's degree it's light it's soft it's airy it's slightly crispy on the outside it's everything that you would want puff puff to be and guess what it's gonna be this way even after even the day after when you go to reheat it and have it as a snack it's still gonna be this delicious which is why i said make your batter just a little bit lighter so that you can enjoy it for longer but guys that's the end of the video thank you so much for watching i love you guys if you did enjoy this video don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to join the flavor family i'd love to have you and until next time i'll catch you on the next one